I um, uh, practiced mainly uh, at Muskegon General and at North Ottawa Community Hospital. And I was uh, also the chief of staff at, at North Ottawa. And then for about 15 years, I was chairman of the Mel uh, Medical Practices Committee. That means if there was an argument between some physicians or physicians and families that uh, they got to come see the Godfather, that's what they said. So, well, got a meeting with the Godfather next week. Uh, when I was an intern at Muskegon General, um, uh, and I worked a lot of hours, 70, 80, 90 hours a week there, uh, and I did a lot of deliveries, and I went, they had a hospital called Seaway over in the Heights. I used to go over there and work at night and do histories and physicals, and, and uh, Dr. Jim Lucy was in practice here in, in uh, Fruitport. And I didn't really know him that well, but I didn't because I didn't have time to go and meet all all the physicians. I had physicians recruiting me up towards Traverse City, Hart, Shelby, um, uh, down uh, down south of uh, Holland. And uh, one night, well, we were in this Lake O's restaurant eating, Virginia and I, and some gentleman sent some wine over to us. And the the waitress uh, Elsa, which we knew well. Uh, said it came from Dr. Lucy. We went over, Jane and I went over and thanked him and, and Dr. Lucy and his wife Eunice had us sit down. Um, he lived down on 8th Street here and he said you need to come out and look at me, you know. Brilliant man, he's still alive. He um, went into making Skagel knives. Uh, Skagel was a fellow that lived here in uh, Fruitport. Anyway, he said you come out, out to, I didn't know how to get to Fruitport. He come out to uh, Fruitport. We lived off of uh, Marquette in apartments in Muskegon when I was an intern, when I was home, you know. And so we came out and met with Jim and Eunice and he brought us uptown to his office and and I thought, you know, this is pretty cool. I, I grew up in a town of about uh, three, four thousand people and here's, here's this nice uh, community and he never put a lot of pressure on me, but I just, we had a good relationship and uh, I ended up taking care of his wife Eunice and he had all daughters and so he made me an offer and he said, he didn't tell me he was planning on leaving though. So I came, came out here, like I said, July 1st, 1968 and uh, Dr. Lucy left about in, in 1970, I believe, and he went, for anesthesia residency and uh, you know I bought the practice and bought the whole corner and, and like he said uh, uh, he got the shaft. He just told me that I practiced too long and I said you know Jim I'm going to tell you it gives me a purpose in life. If I'm home, if I was home like this I'd go nuts. You know I've done this so long that I have to see people, I got to talk to them, try to make them better. Uh, Doc Pierce has been around with the program for a long time. Uh, he's known my dad for, for quite a while, ever since he's been part of the program. And so, uh, growing up and being a part of the program myself, uh, since I was a little guy, I've just always known Doc. And so it was really neat to uh, get to know him as I got older. And then of course, um, any uh, little boo-boo rowie that I had, you know, he was always there to help take care of it and stuff. And so, uh, we just grew very close. And, and I knew he was someone that I could trust if I had uh, any injury that I needed to go uh, get taken care of, he was always there to, to help out and stuff. Luckily I had uh, a wife, uh, Virginia, that backed me 100%. She worked in the office. Yeah, she got gets disgusted with me yet today because I come home at 3 and 4 in the morning and she worries about where I'm at and that. Doc Pierce has been uh, a mainstay in this community. Uh, not only was he the team doctor, but he was on the school board and he's very visible in the community. He did a, an outstanding job for us in our football program. Kept a lot of kids healthy. healthy. Uh, he did a lot of physicals for us and uh, he was always there. He was more than just a team doctor, he was a friend of the program. We've been probably in the mid 80s. We were playing a fruit, fruit port, game at Fruitport and uh, I was an assistant coach and uh, I got a yellow, I got a penalty from the referee for something I must have said. They thought I said it. But as it turns out, I was kind of, I was feeling a little Bad. So I was walking in at halftime and uh, Tom Holden said, he says, I've never gotten one yet, you know. He says, I've never gotten him. He says, Doc gets all my problems. So I said, really? And then when I talked to Doc later, he, said he had 
fessed up that he'd had a number of yellow flags thrown because of things he said. So I guess he and I had that in common. <laughs> we got the referee's attention. So. so you'd call up Doc and you'd say, Doc, I have a kid that needs some help, needs somebody to take a look at me. Without hesitation, Doc would say, send him on in, Mike. Send, and send him in, have him come up after school. And we'd, he'd either walk up to the Third Avenue, he'd either walk up there after school, or he would, or he would come in and see him. I mean, Doc was so much more. If you, <laughs> if you were a male athlete in the school, it was more than just a turn your head and cough guy. He was somebody who, who followed your career through. He took, he took pride in to every athlete that went through the school because, he got to know them. He followed them. He got to see how they how they excelled at their sport and did different things. So Doc was Doc was was great. One thing that really stands out was uh, around Christmas time my senior year. The the football season had already been over, and uh, there were a couple of us that were pretty close with him. That you know we'd go check on him uh, regularly, and and I know that uh, around Christmas time he invited us to come uh, over to his practice, and, and he had a little gift for us. And so uh, a couple of us went there. We kind of had to go at different times, but. Uh, when we got there, he had like kind of a gift bag for us, and it had uh, one of those Build-A-Bears that had a football jersey with Fruitport and our names on the back and number. So that was really cool. And then to uh, uh, just to show how much he really cared about us, he also got us one of those big Yankee candles that we each gave to our mom. So that scored us some big brownie points because uh, we, you know, we had that, to give that to our, our uh, mom for, uh, for Christmas. And so just to show that he's a very, very giving guy, a very caring guy, not only was he worried about us, but making sure that we had something for our moms to open on, uh, on Christmas Day. <laughs> uh, we had team trainers uh, during our years here at Fruitport, and uh, Doc always let them do their work. But if uh, they need a little bit more professional help, Doc was always there to step in, and uh, he was always there to, you know, to have those kids come in for treatment. And uh, it, was, it was always a secure feeling to have Doc uh, with us on the sideline. I'm not one to be out in the public a lot because I really try to dedicate myself to taking care of patients and that's what I feel is necessary. Um, I had, I've had several opportunities, you can imagine, to go to work for a hospital and be under the direction of Mercy or Trinity Health or somebody like that and looking over my shoulder and saying, your 20 minutes is up. Well, I would be gone the first morning because my 20 minutes might be an hour and 20 minutes. You know, and that's just the way I have to do. What a great night. A little longer night than I thought it was going to be, so I will... Uh Try to get you guys. I know Mike Kelly is really anxious to get on the dance floor, so I'll try to get you there. Um, Ken called me about a week and a half ago, and uh, was looking like my dad wasn't going to be able to make it to the to the ceremony tonight. And I was pretty sure that when he called me and asked me to accept for my father, that that was really um, just an opportunity for those guys to get me here so they could flip the script. As a proud Fruitport Trojan athlete, I was pretty sure this was going to be my induction ceremony. Um, so that was my speech that I had prepared. And now I'm in uh, trouble as my mother-in-law watched me scribble some notes here on this uh, on this program. But I will tell the uh, the the, uh, the Hall of Fame committee that they are going to get a nomination form that's going to have my name on it. And I'm going to tell you that all of the uh, uh, athletic accomplishments and awards that are going to be written in there are contrary to what Gordon said about lying, they are going to be true. So you don't even have to check the facts. I promise you that. So um, I just want to start off by, by thanking the, uh, the committee, thank you Bob, thank you Ken for this great night and, and uh, the opportunities to see all these great ex-athletes up here really uh, kind of stoked my fire for the good old days. and. What a neat thing to have have your name enshrined. Um, and I also want to say that it's a, it's a very special honor for me and a privilege to accept this for my father on behalf of my family, uh, my sister Wendy, my sister Kelly, uh, my brother Todd, and my, and my mother uh, who's here tonight. So I, I know my dad would be uh, first and foremost, as did Mr. Brink say, he would thank, uh, my dad would thank his, his wife for 54 years, just about 54 years. My mom, Virginia Pierce, how about a round of applause for you? My 
My dad has a, uh, a few passions in his life, and one of them, of course, is his family. Um, another, of course, is the patients that he's served over virtually 45 years of practice here in Fruitport, his adopted home. Um, he has a, a tremendous passion for that, and growing up in that house, I got to see that passion every day, and I still talk a lot in my, in my life today. I have the opportunity to, at times, talk to groups like this, and I still talk a lot about what it was like to watch a, a small town doctor, I like to call him a, a Doc Hollywood type, who worked seven days a week, who made house calls, and uh, I think a lot of you, if you ever drive by his office, you'd see his car there at kind of all hours of the night. Um, that's dedication and that's passion for the people that he served, and that's a really neat thing as a, as a son to watch that growing up and, and know that you could have such a, a caring for others, and that was my example, and it's a really neat example. Um, he has a, a passion for this community. This is his adopted hometown. He has been here for a long time, uh, virtually all of his life. And as you heard earlier, he came from a little tiny town in Illinois called El Paso, where he played quarterback. And he actually went on for a small stint to play some college quarterback. But this is his hometown, and he is he wears it with pride. You see him all over. I'm sure there's um, all kinds of Lions games and people at casinos and whatnot that see my dad walking around with his Fruitport Trojan football jacket on. I think it's about from 1983 or something like that, but whatever, he wears it with pride and, and he has a, an absolute passion for this community. And he, also, he has a passion for sports and he instilled that in me, he instilled that in his family, that passion for sports and that's undying to this day. I'm sure tonight he's watching basketball on TV um, in his hospital room, but he, um, he really loves football. Above all else, he loves football. That is his sport. He played it, like I said. He, um, he, uh, there was two constants in my life as I grew up. And one of those was that I'd see my dad out on the sidelines um, from a little kid. He was doing that long before uh, I was born. So I, that's all I, I've been able to see, and frankly, that's all I still get to see is my dad on the sidelines, um, at times getting fired up watching the Trojans. And he had a ton of pride in that. And the other one, of course, was um, he's the Lions season ticket holder, and those season tickets essentially being worthless every single year after the season. So those are my two constants in life. Um, but I talked to my dad the other night, and I asked him, what, what, do, you, what do you want me to, to say to the, to the good folks that are going to be here? And he said, tell them above all else I value the relationships. And it, for me, it's, it's been all about the relationships. The relationships that I've been able to have with the players that I've served as their doctor, uh, the relationships that I've been able to have with the coaches that I've been able to work alongside and the relationships that he's been able to have with the administrators of, of the school. And he takes a ton of pride in Fruitport Community Schools and that was point blank it. That's all he wanted me to tell you is the passion that he has for the relationships that he's been able to build in this community. And I think that is a very cool thing. I want to thank all of you. I know many of you either call him doctor uh, because he is your, your, your personal doctor or you call him doc because you know him about town or you've seen him on the sidelines and whatnot. But I want to tell you that um, as, as his family, we know more than anything that you've enriched his life, his life tremendously. And I know he greatly, greatly appreciates that. And I can only hope, and I know he can only hope, that that enrichment that you've given him, that he's given just a little bit of that back to you. I opened up the, uh, and I am going to stop, Jack. This is going to be it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to carry this on. But I opened up the uh, the program tonight, and I was looking at the inductees, and I scanned down to the bottom, and I saw my dad. Um, so it's Dr. Robert Pierce, team doctor, 1968, which is not the last time that Jack took a breath. Um, and that hyphen in there, he's the only one on there that has that hyphen that doesn't have a number after that. My dad's been prowling the sidelines of Fruitport High School for 44 years. He's a little under the weather right now. He's going to get through it. And he assured me that he will be back in action and he will join all of you and you will see him for a 45th year on the sidelines. Thank you very much.